Okay, so another day, another update. For my people that have the iPhone 8, 8 Plus and the iPhone X, those devices were excluded from the supported devices of the latest iOS 17 and 17.1 that just came out today. But today there's an update that you can update to. Right here, you can see the update I'm talking about. This is iOS 16.7.2. Now, for me on my iPhone XS Max, you can see right here the update size. It comes in at exactly 443.8 megabytes and I'm updating from iOS 16.7.1. If you're coming from an old update like iOS 15.8 or you know an older update you're definitely going to see the update size bigger but this is the update size for me i did cover like the update i'm talking about ios 15.8 so check it out on the channel as well but this is not all that apple released today in fact it's been a busy day for apple when it comes to software updates so i'll show you some of the updates that recently just came out so if we go to the apple operating system right here you can see that apple released ios 17.1 iPad OS 17.1, we have Mac OS 14.1, Watch OS 10.1, TV OS 17.1, and of course for all the devices, iOS 16.7.2, we have iPad OS 16.7, and we have iOS 15.8. This device is supported on iPhones that are pretty old, as old as eight and seven years ago which is amazing that Apple is keeping those old iPhones up to date. And most of the updates that I talked about here, I do cover them on the channel. So if you're interested and you wanna keep up to date, definitely do subscribe so that you see what's new and what's changed within this update. Now, before you get all excited and update your device to the latest iOS version that might be there, if you, for example, have an issue that you don't like about iOS 17 and you don't want to update to it and you want to stay to iOS 16, well, this is an update that you can update to because this one, 16.7.2 is available. But let's say, for example, you update to iOS 17 and you don't like how things are going with iOS 17 and you want to come back to iOS 16.7.2, well, there is no way to downgrade to it as Apple has not made the IPSW file available. That is the file that you would download in order to be able to later downgrade your device from iOS 17 to iOS 16. So at this point in time, if you like iOS 16 and you don't want to jump to iOS 17, then it's recommended you stay on iOS 16. As you can see, the 16.7.2, which provides some needed stability and bug fixes but if you go to 17 and want to come back to 16 then there might be an issue there as of now but who knows maybe tomorrow or next week or in about two weeks there'll be a fix to this just like that and my device is now up to date if we go into the settings go to general and go to software update boom ios 16.7.2 and if we go to the about, about this section you can see the version that we have ios 16.7.2 with the build number that's 20h115 so we are up to date and we go back and go to the modern firmware version you can see it's more or less the same 5.03.01 so no change in that aspect and when it comes to some of the changes that are here with this update if you go into your system settings on the mac and you go to where it says desktop and dock there's the widget section you have use iPhone widgets. Now, this was an issue before where widgets that were on an iPhone that's on iOS 16 or an iOS that's not the same as the current release of macOS would show up blank. So you would go into your iPhone widgets or thanks to continuity once you enable them and then you try and add them to your Mac, but they would show up blank or with no information like what you see with some of these they just need the moment to be able to load because some of them i just turn them on right now but this update fixes that and you can see here it's actually mentioned under macOS that this 
has fixed remote widgets that might render blank or mismatched in iOS or macOS releases. So what this essentially means is that if you had an iPhone that's on iOS 16.7.2 that we have today and the Mac that's on the latest like macOS 14.1, widgets would not show up properly. But hey, it's a good thing that this update fixes this and all thanks to the same update that's also patched the same similar issue with Mac OS. Now, of course, like Apple mentions, this update involves or has important stability and bug fixes. And we can see some of those bug fixes right here. If we go to the Apple security page, you can see here with regards to iOS and iPadOS 16.7.2. If we click there, you can see the supported models that I might have missed not said we have a few security and stability patches right here in fact it's quite a lot you can see some have to do with webkit which is like your device interaction with the web and we would like to see this here and be able to see more information this is a publicly available page you see some of the webkit vulnerabilities like for example you see that impact a a processing web content may lead to arbitrary code execution, which is uh, more of a security risk. We have another WebKit vulnerability. We have more WebKit, a lot of WebKit. And then with regards to weather, you notice that an app may be able to access sensitive user data or things to the weather widget or weather app or weather vulnerability or common vulnerability and exposure that has been reported. Siri 2 has a bug that has been fixed or a resolved security patch and it says attacker with physical access may be able to use Siri to access sensitive user data and Safari visiting a malicious website may reveal browsing history even though that history might have been cleared. So that's pretty serious too. We have an issue with ProRes that addressed improved memory handling for the newer phones and also we have MDNS responder and for this one it says a device may be passively tracked by its Wi-Fi Mac address. A thing you can do to try and prevent that if you go into your settings and then you go to your Wi-Fi you can turn on private browsing but even though you will be able to do that you will still be able to be tracked but this has fixed this and uh, it's a good Thing, this update has this and it also has for those people that have uh, turned on the iCloud hide my email function it might have deactivated accidentally or unexpectedly by itself without you doing anything and that has been resolved too. more kernel bugs and fixes and you can see that this has to do with an attacker that has already achieved kernel code execution and may be able to bypass kernel memory mitigation so kernel is the core operating system of the device and if someone attacks your kernel and you know there's a security risk they might be able to get the core functions of the different applications that you have so that's a pretty serious core operating system issue we have io io text encryption family we have image image io we have find my and with find my it says an app may be able to read sensitive location information and we have core animation so you can see that this update has a lot of fixes when it comes to security contents that are included with ios 16.7.2 so since apple took a while to be able to release this this is giving you a chance to be able to know what's going on with the update and why apple is releasing this ios 16.7.2 it's so that you are able to keep your device safe and be able to update to the latest section and uh, keep your device safe and just your overall security. So I did do like a Geekbench score just to see how good this device is performing. You can see for single core, I got a score of 1,314. And for multi core, I got a score of 2,656. This is on the iPhone XS Max. And uh, you see the device right there. And in if we were to go to the history just to see how this compares, you can see comparing this to the previous iOS 16.7.1. So right here, you can see single core, the score that I had. 1154 versus 1314 and then on multi-core 
on this one I have 2656 versus the previous one that was 2435 so Realistically, it looks like it's doing pretty well when it comes to the CPU or at least general device performance when it comes to my iPhone XS Max that has just been updated to iOS 16.7.2. This is a pretty simple, easy update. And as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of new features and changes. But in the background, if you were facing some of the like issues with your widgets not showing up properly on your Mac, or for example, you are worried about some of these security bugs and patches that this update fixes, well, this is a good update for you that covers and uh, resolve most of those issues. So that's about it for me. Remember, I'm covering Mac OS, Watch OS, and maybe TV OS pretty soon. So hit subscribe and then check out some of my latest videos ever. I've already covered some of the recently released updates. So stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I'm flexing, I'm lady, cause life is a blessing. I'm currently counting my blessing. Ascending for heavens. I'm headed away from the universe. I'm coming back, not as human things. Came to the touch, I'm a sinner, but not a beginner. Though every day is a beginning. I'm critically breathing, I'm dusty, I'm kicking my inches. You nasty, I spit on your Misery home, you. Misery home, you. I never liked you, and you never liked me. Stay warm. But nothing contagious is my anger. Riding around in the city, I'm talking.